Our last stop is the Ludwig Maximilians University, LMU for short, in Munich. The LMU is Germany's largest bricks and mortar university. Looking back on more than 500 years of tradition, it provides approximately 150 different degree courses, covering arts, natural sciences, and social sciences to around 50,000 students. Around 2,000 students attend courses at the LMU Faculty of Geosciences. Remote sensing has played a major role here since the first Landsat data became available in the 1970s. At the Department of Geography, under the LMU Faculty of Geosciences, a team of scientists has been involved in the scientific preparation of the NMAP hyperspectral mission since 2009. They are working on the development of algorithms that retrieve biophysical information from hyperspectral data. My name is Tobias Hank. I am a senior researcher and teacher at the Department of Geography of the LMU Munich, and I'm involved in the NMAP preparation mission already since 2009, and mostly in the context of conducting field campaigns in combination with airborne hyperspectral measurements. And of course, agriculture is also my research focus in the hyperspectral domain. And together with my team, I'm developing algorithms for the derivation of biophysical variables from hyperspectral data, which will be of relevance for agricultural management decisions. Here at the Department of Geography of the LMU Munich, we have a very, very long tradition in remote sensing that already dates back to the first Landsat data becoming available in Europe in the 1970s. It was Professor Mauser who started really digging into imaging spectroscopy by constructing airborne imaging spectrometers already in the mid-90s of the previous century. Farming is all about vegetation. And vegetation is one of the land surface categories with the most distinct spectral features. So it doesn't come as a surprise that already a large number of remote sensing based service providers are providing products to farmers. Now, with hyperspectral imaging systems becoming available, I do not really expect a very large jump in technology, as we already have very successful optical systems available, for instance, Sentinel-2. However, I expect an, a marginal increase in accuracy of the already known remote sensing products, and I expect new remote sensing products that can only be achieved with hyperspectral data. With hyperspectral remote sensing, we really can go beyond the classical remote sensing products such as NDVI or leaf area index maps. For instance, me and my team, we are producing maps of canopy water content, of canopy chlorophyll content, or of canopy nitrogen content. And these products are really now pushing from a mere crop yield quantity assessment towards also a yield quality assessment. Agriculture is an open sky business. Actually, it is the largest open sky activity of mankind. So measuring in the lab, it may help with very isolated and distinctive problems, but it is not a solution for practical agriculture. Measuring in the field, however, is very important because the proximity to the target not only allows us to acquire high quality spectral measurements, it also enables us to characterize the physiology of the target very, very precisely in the field. And this then enables us to develop very sophisticated and accurate retrieval algorithms. These measurements in situ, in the end, are all point measurements. Mostly we are measuring single leaves. But we have to acknowledge that these single leaves are attached to stems. And together, the leaves, the stems and the fruits and the roots, they make up a plant. And these plants together, they form a canopy that covers the earth. And this canopy is managed as a field. And this field, again, is part of a landscape. So what point and in situ measurements mostly fail to see is the broader ecological context. And really looking at the land surface from above, from a satellite, enables us to unlock this potential. With hyperspectral information systems, new products become feasible that really make use of this contiguous high spectral resolution coverage. One example may be that with hyperspectral data, we can 
detect also the non-photosynthetically active parts of the vegetation, which represent a large carbon storage actually at the Earth's surface. High spectral resolution imaging spectrometry really also gives us the opportunity to analyze very narrow absorption features. For example, we can see the different pigments in a plant. We can analyze the relation of carotenoids to chlorophyll, which result in a certain color that the crop appears in. And this may be the key for discriminating different var varieties of the same crop. Because different varieties of the same crop, they often manifest in very subtle differences in color. On the other hand, we can also detect very, very subtle absorption features. For instance, the nitrogen or protein absorption features in the shortwave infrared. I think that the users of future hyperspectral data will be scientists, of course, on one hand, who will be exploring the new possibilities and service providers on the other. The benefits of a more sustainable global agriculture, however, will be for everyone. I think the future now offers more opportunities than challenges. I think now we have arrived at a time where imaging spectroscopy from space really becomes feasible. With missions like PRISMA, ANMAP, ASPG, CHIME, just to name a few, operational or on the horizon, this, these really are exciting times to live in as a remote sensing person. To really trigger these new developments, I think that a free and open data policy is one of the most important aspects. It will enable scientists and value-adding companies alike to really make the best possible use of this new data and to develop services that will actually have an impact on the way that we manage our Earth in the future. Scientific explorer missions such as ANMAP, they will enable us to prepare for more operational hyperspectral imaging systems that will provide us with more dense time series of spectroscopic data from space in the future. And as a scientist, I'm really proud of being part of the ANMAP initiative that is helping us to gradually push imaging spectroscopy from a scientific niche into a broader operational context.